Hey everyone, I'm AJ from Whole Latte Love here with one of the most anticipated machines of the last two years, the ECM Puristica. The Puristica was first shown at the Host Milano exhibition at the end of 2019. Shortly after, the pandemic caused delays in its production and release, but enough photos and videos were already out in the wild for the hype and excitement to build, and now it's finally here. The idea is simple, create a compact prosumer grade single boiler home machine for the espresso purist, thus the name Puristica. No milk steaming and no dedicated hot water wand, only the bare essentials and built-in control to let you experiment and achieve excellent espresso. In this video, I'll cover the Puristica inside and out, talk about what the machine is and isn't, and share my personal likes and dislikes about it. In the box with the Puristica, you get an angled double spout 58 millimeter portafilter, single and double shot filter baskets, a blind filter, stainless steel tamper, and a group brush. Until you see it in person, it's hard to overstate just how compact the Puristica is. At just 7.7 .7 inches wide, 13.7 inches deep, and 12.4 inches tall, it edges out the Casa 5 as ECM's smallest espresso machine. That said, this was achieved by separating the 2-liter water reservoir into a standalone component that connects through the back of the machine. This reservoir is made of thick glass with a metal lid and can be located on either side of the machine or behind it. Water connections are made with two steel encased hoses, an intake line to get water from the reservoir into the machine, and a return line for excess water diverted by the expansion valve when maximum pressure is reached. Inside you have a 0.75 liter stainless steel boiler containing a 1000 watt heating element. A rocker switch on the back turns your machine on or off. Brewing temperature is controlled by a PID, which is programmable from 176 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The PID display doubles as a shot timer when you raise your brew lever. Temperature is further stabilized by an E61 brew group, which passively heats through a thermosiphon while the machine is sitting idle. In my tests using a SCASE device, temperature was extremely accurate, generally within half a degree Fahrenheit of your program temperature throughout a simulated shot. Using the buttons on the display, you can also turn on and program eco mode, which designates the amount of inactivity time in minutes before the machine enters a standby state. You can set a cleaning reminder or number of brew cycles before it prompts you to back flush and toggle between Fahrenheit and Celsius. If you want to turn off the display, simply hit the plus button. You'll see a small dot in the corner and you can just press the plus button again to turn it back on. One of the more intriguing features of the Puristica is a front mounted knob for adjusting the expansion valve, allowing you to easily set your max brew pressure, which I'll get into more a bit later. Mirroring that valve on the left side, you have a brew pressure gauge for helping setting your pressure and monitoring it during extractions. Up top, you have a passively heated cup warming tray, and down below, a removable drip tray held on by magnetic mounts for additional stability. If you want or need to get inside, it's as easy as four screws on the front, four screws on the back, and lift off the anthracite housing. Inside, all of the key components are thoughtfully laid out and easily accessible should you need to service any parts. One added bonus of a simplistic, espresso-only design is that there are less parts to maintain or worry about anything happening to down the road. For the espresso purist, you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Four more screws on the underside will remove a plate giving you access to the bottom of the boiler, including a valve to fully drain it for shipping or long-term storage. So let's talk more about that expansion valve on the front, what it is and what it isn't. The adjustment knob is intended to set your max brew pressure while using a blind filter, the same way you would do with an OPV and some other machines. ECM notes a range of 8.5 to 12 bar, however this range may vary from machine to machine and also may change slightly over time with use of the valve. On mine, I was able to dial between 4 
and 11 bar static pressure in a closed system. What the knob isn't intended for is pressure profiling, or modifying your brew pressure throughout an extraction. The Puristica's user manual is pretty upfront about this, instructing you to only adjust the brew pressure with a blind filter. So it can be good for light experimenting, maybe finding out which roasts work best at which pressures, but it's not intended as a tool for frequent manipulation. If that is what you're looking for, Whole Latte Love is offering a version of the Puristica pre-installed with a flow control device. Flow control gives you that power of manually adjusting water flow as a shot progresses. There are many uses for this, including taming an overly fresh light roast or pulling the most out of some beans that maybe have been sitting around a bit past their prime. While the E61 allows you to do a light pre-wetting of the grounds by lifting the lever just beyond the midway point, Flow Control opens up the ability for a proper and customizable pre-infusion. We have a bunch of videos on Flow Control, how to use it, and some simple profiles to try, and I'll link those down in the video description. With precise control over your temperature, pressure, and flow, this machine allows you to become an espresso scientist tweaking and testing a bunch of different coffees and recipes, or find what you like, set it, and forget it. The choice is up to you, but the deep level of control is there if you choose to use it. I like pretty much everything about the Puristica. Some stuff is obvious and I've already pointed it out. The small footprint, stylish design, simple internals, and control over a number of variables. But if you've ever owned an espresso machine before, you know that over time it can often be the small details that can make or break your everyday user experience. Here are a couple of the less apparent things I really liked while using the Puristica. First up is the Porta filter. Aside from being angled for easier level tamping on a countertop, the spouts are centered directly on the Porta filter head. This isn't the case with most manufacturers, and even some other ECM models. Since this machine is so compact, you're naturally limited in your work area on the drip tray. The centered spouts allowed me to easily fit multiple espresso cups or center up a scale, whereas with the offset spouts, I would have had to hang the scale out over the front of the tray. I also like the cup warmer up top. It's big enough to hold a few cups, stays at a good temperature for preheating them, and the anthracite provides better grip and more scratch resistance than the typical polished stainless steel warmers. Additionally, the solid top eliminates the worry of water dripping down into the internals of your machine if you place a freshly washed cup up there. While the drip tray is small, the design is excellent. It pulls straight out rather than having to lift over a lip like on many other machines. The attached magnets are strong enough to hold it in place, but not so powerful that you need to yank it off and risk spilling when you remove it. Underneath the tray, you have a nice hidden spot for storing your blind filter. Lastly, I love the external water tank. Aside from being able to place it on whichever side of the machine best fits your setup, it's easy to monitor your water level at a glance. There are few things more frustrating than going through your whole shot prep routine lifting your brew lever, and then running out of water halfway through the extraction. The design also allows for easy filling without having to slide the whole machine out from under cabinets or remove your cups and tray up top to access an internal reservoir. Considering the glass tank is almost as big as the machine itself, for me it's a perfect compromise of saving space with the design while also providing a big enough water reserve so you're not constantly refilling it. No machine is perfect for everyone. I do prepare occasional milk drinks, so the lack of that feature wasn't ideal for me. But obviously someone who loves lattes and cappuccinos isn't the target audience for this design. I found several accounts online of people who plan to buy the Puristica, saying everyone in their household drinks strictly espresso or Americanos, and that they plan to get a standalone milk frother for the rare occasion where they had company over who might want a milk drink. Aside from that, the knob for the expansion valve can get pretty warm after the machine has been running for a while. ECM does note this in the manual, and again, this isn't something you'll be adjusting all the time, so it wasn't a huge issue, but something to be aware of.
I had seen a fast heat up time as a selling point for the Puristica, which made me a little skeptical. It has an E61 brew group, and that's just not how these work. A half hour heat up is fairly standard for this type of machine, since the circulating hot water has a large chunk of metal to heat up to a stable temperature. This is also what makes these groups so effective, as that thermal mass provides temperature stability while brewing shot after shot. Still, I wanted to test these claims to see if maybe I was missing something. I used a group mounted thermometer to monitor circulating brew water within the thermosiphon system, not necessarily to measure the temperature itself, but rather to determine when the temperature stabilized, indicating that the group head had reached fully heated level. With a cold machine, I charted the temperature for an hour after first switching it on. The results were on par with what I've come to expect from all other E61 machines. You'd likely be fine brewing after about 25 minutes with a flush of the group before pulling your shot. But without any intervention, it continued to gradually climb until about 50 minutes before fully stabilizing. Now we often say that running a couple blank shots through the group during heat up can speed up this process, but I've never actually quantified this. So I ran the test again the next morning, well after the machine had fully cooled. This time I did five 10 second flushes, one every five minutes. You can see from the chart that this definitely helped. With the flushes, the machine reached fully stable after 26 minutes. Now I don't expect you to stand by your machine the whole time with a timer like I did, and I'm also not saying that 10 seconds every five minutes is the perfect formula for fastest heat up. But if you're near your machine while it's warming up, maybe go over and do the occasional flush to speed up the process. Of course, if you never want to wait at all, simply install a smart plug, leave your power switch in the on position, and program the machine to turn on with enough time for it to be ready when you want it. Whole Latte Love is offering the ECM Puristica with custom wood components, including a matching wood portafilter handle and brew lever, available in walnut, tiger maple, wenge, zebra wood, quilted sapile, and purple heart. When ordered with the flow control upgrade, the device's knob will also match whatever species of wood you select. So is the Puristica the perfect machine for everyone? Well, no. If you like milk drinks, obviously look elsewhere. But if you're all about espresso and want the control to experiment and dial in your perfect shot, look no farther than this stylish, compact powerhouse. If you have any questions about the Puristica or anything coffee, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. And as always, please be sure to subscribe and come back to the channel for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.